After a long absence from the big screen, The Muppets returned to theaters with a new movie in 2011 that celebrated Jim Henson's iconic creations and what they mean to the world. Following Disney's acquisition of The Muppets in 2004, a few television specials and viral YouTube videos were produced, but they did not seem to be a major priority for the company. That changed when Jason Segel pitched Disney an idea for a new Muppet movie that would honor Kermit, Miss Piggy, and the rest of the gang and prove there was still a significant audience. Hiring James Bobbin to direct and Nicholas Stoller to help write it with Siegel, the new movie, simply titled The Muppets, was an absolute delight and immediately shot up to being one of my favorite Muppet movies. The concept of the Muppets wanting to get back into the limelight was a solid one, fitting with the Muppets being natural entertainers. Through The Muppet Show, the earlier movies, and other ventures, the Muppets are shown to want nothing more than to have an audience willing to watch and laugh at their wacky antics. Whether it's Fozzie and his jokes, Gonzo and his daredevil stunts, or Miss Piggy of her constant need for the spotlight, the Muppets live for showing what they do best. With this movie, we see them try to raise money by putting on a show. But it's also difficult not to think of this entire production as the Muppets proving to Disney that there are still people who will pay to see them perform. That adds an additional sentimental element to the story. While some may view the film as being too sentimental, the Muppets trying to tug at our heartstrings is hardly anything new. After all, the Muppet movie and the Muppet Christmas Carol, which are considered arguably the best Muppet movies, are very heavy in sentiment. I love that Jason Siegel, being a fan of the Muppets, decided to look at this story from the perspective of a fan who has grown up loving them and wondering about their current state. Making a new Muppet with Walter was a bold move, but creating one who is essentially a fan of the Muppets was such an inspired idea. Walter is a relatable character in so many ways, as he becomes fascinated with these characters he watched on television, but holds doubts of his own talents and abilities. Peter Lins did a wonderful job of performing Walter, depicting his optimism and fanboyism for the Muppets, along with his various nerves. As bizarre as the idea of him and Siegel's character Gary being brothers is, it does not take long into the movie to buy these two having grown up together. His arc of deciding whether he belongs with Gary or with the Muppets is nicely told, and throughout the course of the film, a fondness does grow for him. The classic Muppets are also well utilized, though with so many of them it's hard to give the proper time to everyone. Kermit the Frog obviously gets the most focus, and the film does a nice job of showing his uncertainty of getting the Muppets back together again, before eventually being inspired to give it a go and how he deals with the difficulties that face them. I think this might be my favorite Steve Whitmire performance from his entire time playing Kermit, nailing both the comedic and emotional bits. And of course, we get Fozzie's corny jokes, Miss Piggy's desire to be by Kermit's side, Gonzo's constant need to do anything possible, and Statler and Waldorf's wisecracks. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker, Rolf, Sam Eagle, Pepe the King Prawn, Swedish Chef, and Bobo the Bear also get a few moments to provide laughs. One neat thing was the filmmakers bringing back Uncle Deadly for a major role. He had not made an appearance for over 20 years, and he found a great use for him, serving as the villain Tex Richmond's number two, until he rejects his evil ways and rejoins the Muppets. Deadly has even continued to be used in Muppets projects since. A major component of any Muppet movie is the use of human actors, both important roles and cameos. Having come up with the movie, Siegel naturally played the lead human role of Gary, and he has solid chemistry with both Walter and Amy Adams as his girlfriend Mary. I thought Siegel and Adams were given just enough screen time exploring their relationship, but not getting too much in the way of the Muppets. Even though Siegel had largely made a name for himself on How I Met Your Mother, Judd Apatow productions, and R-rated comedies, he adjusts himself well to the Muppet world, and you can pretty much see him beaming with happiness at getting the chance to act opposite them. Amy Adams had already proven her skills at musical comedies, and she continued to be a delight in this movie. Chris Cooper brought the right level of menace as Tex Richmond, who serves as a solid parody of the evil developer villain we're accustomed to seeing in movies. Meanwhile, Jack Black is hilarious as an exaggerated version of himself. I find it funny that at no point does he warm himself to the Muppets, which is something they could have done. But nope, he stays annoyed at them right until the end. Of the cameos, Alan Arkin is probably my favorite as the board tour guide of the largely abandoned Muppet Studios. And we also have enjoyable appearances from Emily Blunt, parodying her character from The Devil Wears Prada, Kristen Schaal, and Zach Galifianakis. The comedy remains a high point of this Muppet movie, with the usual sermon of psych gags and meta humor. There was often an awareness from the Muppets of their acting in a movie. The first Muppet movie is even bookended by scenes of them attending a screening of said film. That is evident throughout this movie, too, with wonderful jokes like the Muppets traveling by map and referencing the fact that they're in a montage. The Muppets always existed in a chaotic world where anything is possible, and people naturally accepting this frog, pig, bear, and whatever walking around. I also really like how this movie acknowledges some of their previous movies, like the use of the standard rich and famous contract from the Muppet movie as a significant plot point. 
Bob and Siegel still learn the puppeteers were able to keep that comedic momentum high throughout the film and mix them nicely with the more heartfelt scenes. One of the other important elements of a Muppet movie is the music. The soundtrack for this film provided a fantastic mix of familiar songs and new tunes. Brett McKenzie was the principal songwriter, and he devised some great songs. My favorite is the opening number, Life's a Happy Song, which quickly establishes the tone of the film. It has the right lyrical quality and catchy melody, while the choreography feels like a throwback to classic MGM musicals. The plot of the movie is already an homage to the Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, Let's Put On A Show type musicals, and so, fittingly, Rooney makes a brief appearance during the song. There's also pictures in my head about Kermit reflecting about his time with the Muppets. Written by Jeannie Lurie, Eris Acontis, and Chen Neiman, it's a beautiful song with some great use of the Muppets and portraits at Kermit's mansion. Mackenzie's Manor Muppet is a fun duet. With Gary and Walters, they question whether they are, well, a man or a Muppet. I like that while the melody is overly dramatic, the lyrics are intentionally silly. Curiously, this was the song from the movie that ended up winning an Oscar. Then again, that was a strange year of owning one other nominee, and the Academy has since changed the rules to guarantee five nominations in that category. My personal pick would have been Life's Happy Song, but I view this win as more of an acknowledgement of the Muppets' entire musical legacy, so I'm not that bothered by Man or Muppet winning. The only original song in the Muppets that does not do it for me is Tex Richmond's rap number, Let's Talk About Me. It's so bizarre and disruptive, even for the Muppets, and does not gel with the musical style of the rest of the film. I guess that's maybe the point, and Chris Cooper certainly gives it his all, but it's one of the few comedic parts of the movie I find falls flat. Happily, the way the film uses pre-existing songs is wonderful. The 80s song, We Built the City, is nicely integrated into a montage of the characters rebuilding the Muppet Theater, and then there's the use of the Rainbow Connection. This results in one of the emotional high points, and it's incredibly touching seeing the Muppets come together on stage to perform this song. It's hard not to feel something when this scene plays, made even better when Animal finally plays the drums near the end. The entire third act of the Muppet Telethon serves terrific homage to the legacy of the Muppet Show as well. It's so sweet seeing the audience come in to support the Muppets and remember all the joy they provided over the years. And then there's that moment when they open the theater door, step outside, and see the crowd of cheering fans. It's a lovely scene that captures how much the Muppets mean to everyone. Even during those times when they're not appearing in a new movie or television show, they will always have an enduring audience of fans who love their work and continue to revisit that output. That's what this movie was about. It was the result of people who hold the Muppets so dear and wanted to celebrate what Jim Henson and his team of puppeteers and writers started so many years ago. Although there is one thing about the movie I find a tad ironic. Part of the plot revolves around the Muppets trying to prevent their name and legacy from being owned by a big corporation. So it's funny that the end credits say the movie is based on Disney's Muppet properties and characters. Not Jim Henson's Muppets, Disney's Muppets. Just in case you forgot who has the rights to them now. Anyway, I still remember being so excited for this film before it was released. Not just because of the chance to see a new Muppet outing on the big screen, but the marketing was so brilliant. The first trailer, starting off like some feel-good Hallmark movie, only to reveal it's actually a Muppet movie, was an incredibly inspired idea. I only ever saw this teaser online, but I remain curious about the reaction from people who saw this in theaters. The later trailers that parodied other movies from around that time were also cleverly done, and the ones that focused on selling the film itself were also nicely edited and built up hype even more. The Muppets performed well at the box office, which led to Muppets Most Wanted, and even though Jason Seal is not involved with that one, I also really enjoyed it as the filmmakers upped the zany comedy and Brett McKenzie provided more delightful songs. Sadly, Muppets Most Wanted did not do as well for some reason. A few projects have been produced for Disney Plus the past few years, but I would love another big screen movie. Oh well, in any case, I'm happy we got 2011's The Muppets, which I think is a very funny, charming musical with plenty of heart and great use of the characters. Now let me know. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to be recording a show. I'm in research mode. What for you summon me, oh great boss of the North? Don't look at me. I was just finishing up talking about the 2011 Muppet movie, and suddenly you're here. I think the internet is just being weird as usual. Or something is trying to force us into a Muppet movie review. And I'm already working on one. Okay, I'll see you then. Mana mana. <laughs> That was not the right remote. Well, since I can't figure out how to send you back to your own channel, do you want to share your own thoughts on the 2011 Muppet movie? Might as well stay on topic. Uh, all right, but consider this one a freebie. Ah, yes, the 2011 Muppet movie. I remember seeing this in theaters when it debuted, and it was such a big deal. The last theatrical Muppet movie I saw was in 1999, so that already says a lot. 
For older enthusiasts, it was a neat little treat to see these characters again. For other audiences, it served as a good introduction to those unfamiliar with Kermit and the gang. Upon revisiting it recently, I was worried at first that it wouldn't hold up as well. The first quarter focuses so much on Walter and his brother Gary that I was concerned <laughs> they would be the big focus. However, I was proven wrong once Kermit and the gang showed up. It's a cool throwback to the traditional Muppet flicks with a little road trip and zaniness that we all love and enjoy. There's even nods and some interesting pieces of continuity that I never realized before. On first watch, I was taken back by how weird of a motive our bad guy has for buying the studio and theater saying oil is underneath. But upon revisiting it, I was remembered that something like this was mentioned in a season 4 episode with Kenny Rogers, albeit a very un-PC one, so it does make me wonder how well these writers actually did their homework. True, it would've been nice to get the original Muppet performers, but I feel the folks they got here did fine. And it was nice to see David Goles as Gonzo again. I cannot imagine anyone else but him as my all-time favorite Muppet. The songs are good, there's heart and humor, but if I did have to nitpick a teeny bit, it's really in the storytelling department. It doesn't hurt the movie completely, but it's something that bugged me ever since I first saw it. There are moments when you kind of feel like they try to push an emotional moment, or they uncertainly feel how much character depth should be placed in. I have a feeling that there's tons of footage that was filmed and became a hard spot to determine what was crucial to the story and characters. Remember that hip-hop number Tex Richmond had, and how pointless it felt in the theatrical cut? As it turns out, there was a deleted section where he brings up his reason for why he hates the Muppets. Honestly, small pieces like that kind of feel crucial as they enrich the people and environment of the movie. I remember the past movie features would be zany and quick, but even they knew when to stop to take a breath or have a heartfelt moment. You get those here, like the song Man or Muppet, which is funny, and it's in fact the heart of the story. But then you have numbers like Me Party that could have been easy removed, and you kind of feel like its only purpose there is to extend the running time. Some breaths and quick joke beats are fine, but my word to editors and future storytellers is don't be afraid to pad out the running time with character depth and heart. And yeah, watching this again, it was a little off-putting to see a poster for Cars 2 on display, and even more head-scratching was seeing a banner honoring Jim Henson waving in front of the studio for Jimmy Kimmel Live. I get it. Disney owns the Muppets now. Bad enough we don't have physical releases of seasons 4 and 5, but being heavily reminded of that took me out at times. In hindsight, it's interesting that we have two modern Muppet movies now. One that introduces the audiences to the characters, and one that is a pure zany Muppet movie. I like them both, and they do have their pros and cons. Yet nothing will compare to the purity of the first one from 1979. That will remain a tough act to follow. But I will admit, there are moments here that do come so close, especially near the end. The 2011 film exists to carry that legacy to a new set of enthusiasts, and that's what I feel it really set out to do. It's sweet, charming, and an endearing love letter to why we love Henson's creation so well. And I wouldn't mind recommending to someone who's never heard of the Muppets before. At least have them watch the very first one before they dive right into this one. Thank you so much for your insight, Morgan. In the meantime, I figured out how to get you back to your own channel. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get back to doing research for the Muppet movie I'm covering on my show. Oh, which one are you doing? The Muppet movie. Right. Yes. My favorite Muppet movie. Alright. You can join if you want to. Uh, do you happen to have access to the flick? Shouldn't be a problem. I guess that wraps it up. Thank you, Morgan, for coming, and I'll see you next time on The Muppet Show. Wait, that's Kermit's line. I gotta get back to work on my Muppet movie review for my show. Oh no, Judy's drunk. Oh no! She was prepping for Christmas too early. Too many peppermint schnapps. No girl, no!